Now that is another Koromangla icon. Every second place is an eatery, is a restaurant. So well anyways, time to get back home. I think we've had enough adventure for the day. Beginning with the f and then finding a kind soul in Balachandar. And then of course a short Koromangla neighborhood ride culminating in sharing with you some memories of my office here. Owned by none other than the great cricketer. Hey folks, it's 9.50 on a Sunday morning. Uh, just stepping out for a ride. Yes, I'm late again and that seems to be the theme on most Sundays. Need to definitely step out of it, snap out of this. Had something that I was attending to last evening, some work of course, and therefore had to get my 6-7 hours of sleep and after doing everything that I had to do this morning, only managed to uh, get ready now. So it's going to be warm, uh, summer is here, Bengaluru has a lovely winter of course, but during summers it can get really hot and uh, so I know that it's going to be a warm hot sort of a ride. Probably I'll just putter around town, uh, maybe Koromangla or something like that. I don't know but uh, you'll find out as you accompany me on this ride. There was a time when all my Sunday rides were long rides. Uh, minimum was 180 kilometers. I would ride at least uh, 45 Sundays in a week, if not more. I'm hoping that once I get my tyres replaced too, which is another deterrent right now for doing long rides, I'm hoping to get back to not that complete schedule, but at least some of that. Otherwise, it's a little pitiful when you have a machine like this and only do these short city rides. Of course, the city rides have their own charm, but still, this is a machine that's happiest on the highway. Cruising. Oh dear, I think I have a flat. This is a beautifully balanced motorcycle. So if it's a, if it has a flat, that's the rear. So the tire sinks, and therefore you have like a flat sort of a surface contact with the ground, and the motorcycle almost balances itself. Right now, to be honest, I could lift both my feet up, and the motorcycle will will stay, will hold, which is. How I knew I had a flat. Oh damn. The last thing that I wanted was a flat and it's not at all fun to handle this baby when it has a flat. Let me see if I can fill some air and then try and get the flat fixed. Oh boy. I'm literally groaning trying to push this monster. Oh boy. Last thing that I wanted on a hot day like this. Well, if you enjoy motorcycling, this is also what comes with the territory. The air pressure is just at 5 or 7, just to give you a sense of how low the air pressure has slipped to. I'm going to start the motorcycle just to ensure that I don't drain my battery off while using the pump. This is a process that is going to take some time because to get it all the way from uh, a little above zero to where it needs to be 40 is certainly going to take some time. Also is a serious reminder for me to get that tyre replaced very soon. You also can fill it uh, in one go because otherwise the pump burns out or it also knocks the fuse off on the motorcycle because it's connected to the motorcycle's electricals. So now that I've filled a bit, I've got to pause and wait for about 30 seconds and then refill again. The tire pressure looks okay now to, I think, ride up to a puncture shop. That's the advantage of having a air pump. Otherwise, absolutely impossible. Just imagine trying to push this uh, 
450 kilo beast a kilometer or so there's one tire shop here but uh, let me see if I can get it done there Puncher check mad bego Tubeless in there though You gotta know gali haki ban there He wants to know if the motorcycle has a center stand No chance That's a flat right there, you can see it That's the advantage of having a tubeless tire In fact that's one of the reasons why I Was never comfortable riding the Himalayan because without a tubeless tyre, there's no other recourse but to open the tyre and then fix the flat. Nearly there. You're saying, well, your tyre is flat, you need to change it. I said, yes, I do. Ah. That's it, and the puncture is fixed. Aita? Nori? Not quite, there's still air escaping from the tyre. Dappa da ki dhra higa? That thin one didn't do, so he's put a fat one. Very good, I'm glad he had that, otherwise I would have been stuck. Aita higa? Aita. Hey, roo, chin madi. Well, I'm glad that we got it fixed without too much of an issue. Is it here in you? Is it here? Is it here? Tiffin Madi, Tiffin Madi. Okay, thank you. Well, such a sweet guy that Balachandra turned out to be. Didn't want to take any extra money other than what he charged typically for the puncher. I gave him 200, but he gave me 100 back, saying no, it's 120. He didn't even ask me for the other 20. I gave him the 20, but then I gave him the other 100. I said, no, please keep this. Have some tea, coffee on me. You don't see people like Balachandra too much these days what a gem of a guy it is warm it is warm i think i'm going to only ride around koromangla now getting the uh, tire pressure thing sorted the puncher fixed has taken the mickey out of me on a sunday morning I think after Jayanagar, uh, I, that reminds me, I hope you caught the uh, Jayanagar ride motor vlog. Basically, a ride, a cruise through some memories that I have in Jayanagar. So, I don't know if you like the video. Do let me know what you felt of that video. Basically, these rides are more about me just puttering around and, you know, having a conversation with you. So after Jayanagar, the other place that I really spent time in is Koromangla, which is of course where I also live now. I remember when we would go to Koromangla in the 90s, there was really nothing there. There was one eatery there that we would go to for some uh, kebabs and things like that. I don't even remember what the name of that eatery was. And we would park in our cars there and they would bring stuff to us. And now if you look at it, I think you had St. John's then. But that was it and a few houses here and there scattered around it. But now Koromangla is uh, entirely a different scene altogether. So nobody wanted to go to Koromangla then because of the mosquitoes. And uh, so we would drive from Jayanagar to Koromangla only if we needed to. The mobile phone has just changed things, right? 
So I think she is the conductor of the bus if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not wrong. But through her phone she can connect with people, you know, have a light-hearted conversation, perhaps even in the middle of a busy work day. Once I saw a property here for an office that I was considering. I think let's get into the bylines. Uh, this is the beautiful part of Koromangla where you have these large houses. The lanes are not as broad as Jainagar but uh, it still has its charm. I can smell the foliage. Wow, look at that tree. I don't know how many must be at least a hundred years old, huh? They have some beautiful houses on this road. I also had uh, a couple of offices in Koromangla and one of them has an interesting story. We'll get to it when we get to the office. So these bungalows here in Koromangla are very are more newer, right? They are more modern as opposed to what we saw in what we see in Jayanagar. They are these huge speed breakers to I guess to discourage the wandering motorcyclists like me. Oh look at this. Such a huge bungalow. Should we go left? All right. Look at this beautiful leafy lanes. I think let's go right. And admire the architecture. So most of these are newer properties. So therefore, the architecture too is uh, modern. Probably the sort that will uh, fit into any affluent neighborhood in any developed country of the world look at the scale of that house because you also have a few apartments uh, in this old part but not as many oh, we've come outside I think I should take the cross and go back in yes Beautiful houses again. <laughs> what cross are we on? Hey, the other block, you know? The other block, you know? Third block. Third block. The other cross, the other main. 11th. 11th main, huh? Post office only there. Arcade. Third block or among I don't I'm not very familiar with the blocks and things like that here. But this is uh, I can literally smell the foliage here. I'm not joking. I can smell the foliage. Oh. Look at these houses. My goodness, they're massive. I also know that many of the IT leaders, many of the top bosses in the IT space in Bengaluru live here in Koromangla. And uh, these houses that I see are certainly befitting of the kind of personalities that probably inhabit them. So this is the uber swanky part of Koromangla. Now I think let's get to the more mainstream Koromangla. Fifth cross, third block. This is a park that has come up in the recent past, only in the last few years.
This is 12th main, 3rd block. This is a place that I'm familiar with because uh, earlier when we used to do work with hotels, etc. One of our clients was right here on the left side, Grand Mercure of Bengaluru. And uh, we did some work with them, so I would come here every once in a while. What I like about this hotel, this is a brigade property, is that they've really uh, built the hotel in a manner that integrates them well into the neighborhood. It doesn't stand out, stick out like a sore thumb. The aesthetics are quite earthy, quite rooted to the neighborhood. I think now we've truly exited from the uh, uber swanky part of Koromangla, third block, to the more mainstream. There used to be an eatery here called Satya's, a garden restaurant of sorts. I think that's where it was. It was, uh, you'd get some tandoor, tandoori stuff, chicken tikka and some beers to go with it. This is a road that goes up to first block. Again, this was a road that I would take often because at the end of this road, there was a eatery called uh, Cafe Thalp which is where one would come often. I think Cafe Talp is now a Tiffin trendy place. I think Cafe Talp, owned by my friend uh, Chef Gautam Krishnan Gutti, would make the best burgers. Really the best burgers. This is again an old apartment block, Raheja Residency. I used to have friends who would live here. Still do. Should I just turn around? I'll get stuck in the signal. I think we'll just turn back. I've had enough sweating for today. Getting the puncture fixed. Nasty knock with the speed breaker. I don't know why they can't do a speed breaker with the right incline, ascent and descent. Now that is another Koromangla icon, hole in the wall cafe. A very popular breakfast spot as you can imagine. As you can see, the people it's 10 30 10 45 people still crowding around waiting for a turn at the table for breakfast okay let's take one of these inner roads fourth block or mongla Oops. So this school that you see here, Head Start, is where my daughter's first uh, kindergarten was. So she began here. So again a place that one would bring her to. I would also attend church here back in the day. That's the Koromangla Methodist Church to my left. Let's turn right. I'm also just getting a bit of a ride just so that I can keep the battery charged. I didn't ride last week. I think apartments are still far and few in Koromangla. It's one of those places where things haven't really uh, progressed beyond a certain point. In some pockets at least, as far as apartments go. This of course is the flyover that's coming in from uh, Sony World Signal going all the way up to Hosu Road.
I'm very scared to now ride on the shoulder because that's typically where you find the nails and things like that. Things like the one that got my tire. Oh boy. The moment you stop, you can feel the heat. When you're riding, you're cool. It makes such a difference when you're riding in the inner lanes with uh, all the tree shade, looking at all the flowers. So I don't know if it's actually physically cooler, but it certainly feels cooler. You just come one street out onto the main road with all the traffic and all the construction. Certainly things get a lot hotter. I don't know if you feel the same way too. We will ride to a place where I had an office earlier and uh, where we spent considerable amount of time. I think let's do that. Let's ride towards that area. Take a left here. Sixth block. My office was in the fifth block. And I'll tell you why I want to show you that office. It has a very interesting uh, angle to it. Oh, that's a sweet Jeep. That's Koromangla Club. Looks very different from what it used to be earlier. Very modern building now. And at the end of the road, you also have India Sweet House that I inaugurated a couple of weeks ago. So we're now entering 5th block Koromangla. I'll tell you of my connection to this place. This house I remember from way back. It was just like the way that you see it now. I think only thing has, that's happened is the color has changed. And another house that hasn't changed the last time, since the last time I was here. Actually, I occupied this premises for a very, very long time. Is this. You can see a board number 206 block Koromangla. Oh, I thought it was 5th block. Maybe I'm mistaken now. So this building that you see here was my office for a good, I think, three, four years when we were doing the magazine. And this is where we would publish from. So that's not the only interesting thing about this place. What's interesting about this building is the who's the owner is none other than the iconic cricketer the wall Rahul Dravid so he was my landlord so every month I would write this check and I would joke as I was writing that check I think I don't remember what the amount was I think some 40 or 50 thousand rupees a month and this is at least about uh, seven years ago and I would say this is probably the smallest check that he gets what really got me attracted to this place was the uh, greenery that I saw around here a very quiet road then back in the day of course much has changed since like everywhere else in Bengaluru. So well anyways, time to get back home. I think we've had enough adventure for the day. Beginning with the flat. And then finding a kind soul in Balachandar. And then of course a short Koromangala neighborhood ride. Culminating in sharing with you some memories of my office here. Owned by none other than the great cricketer. Rahul Dravid. That's my connection with the wall. The moment you start moving, you get immediate respite from the heat. So the motto in life should be to always keep moving. The other aspect of Koromangla is its very young uh, student population as well. Also young professionals who live in and around the area. You know, especially uh, on the fringes of Koromangla for the most part. And also because there are uh, institutes here, educational uh, institutions here like uh, Jyoti Nivas, uh, the schools, uh, etc. Christ College is not too far away. So there are many young professionals, students who live here and, and therefore this place has become very popular with restaurants and eateries too. Not fancy ones but small 
sort of eateries, restaurants. So in fact, this street, which looks quite and deserted now, is chock a block with eateries. If you look around, and if you come here in the evening, sometimes there's literally no space to walk even. That's how packed this place becomes. There's of course Meghna Biryani right there, and uh, look at this. There are bars. There's the uh, Panwalas, eateries. There is Empire, McDonald's. Every second place is Indian Chai Lounge. Every second place is an eatery, is a restaurant. And uh, further up on the right, you also have uh, Koramangla Social. There's a barbecue nation here now. Starbucks, Theobroma, Hangover, Badmash. I mean, it tells you the kind of audience that they get, which is very, very young. And this is Raheja Arcade on my left hand side, which is perhaps Bengaluru's earliest commercial uh, complex. And after uh, Rahul Dravid's house, I moved my office to Raheja Arcade and we were here for a while. And we moved out, thankfully, just before the pandemic. So that's my connection with Korumangla goes way back. I hope you found this ramble interesting. I was hoping to ride through town, but uh, thanks to the flat, I just decided to do something easy. And uh, this is what it was. If you enjoyed this watch, give this vlog a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of these neighborhood sort of ride throughs whether I should be doing them or not doing them or if, you, if there's something more that you would like to see in these ride-throughs the beautiful thing about this machine is that although you may be just at 5 kilometers per hour the way it balances itself it's beautifully balanced so anyways I think that's it for this vlog home is just uh, a few seconds away once I get past the signal have a good Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on I'll see you on the next one. Bye.